is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am bull pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 mazda cx30 courtesy of hanover mazda in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today because mazda traditionally has very fun to drive vehicles it doesn't matter if it's an suv or car also you have relatively affordable pricing with the cx30 as well and all-wheel drive comes standard which is a big plus because it is downpouring today but anyways ultimately in this video we'll, we'll be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it so there are an absolute ton of trim levels for the 2024 cx30 first one being the base starting at 24,995 select sport for 265 preferred which is the one we are in today going for 28,790 carbon edition for 29,790 premium for 31,990 carbon turbo which is a new trim level for 2024 going for $32,790 turbo premium for $34,990 and lastly the turbo premium plus going for $36,800 like I said an absolute ton of trim levels but as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are a couple different power plants available for the CX-30 first one of course belonging to all of the non-turbo trim levels and the one that we have today. Powering the Beast is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, putting out 191 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 186 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels through a six speed automatic, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.6 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other power plant, of course, belonging to the turbo trim levels. That one is powered by a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder of course putting out 250 horsepower at 5,000 rpm 320 pound feet of torque coming in at 2500 rpm that power being sent to all four wheels yet again through a six speed automatic zero to 60 time for this one 5.8 seconds it's plenty impressive there with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 30 on the highway but taking premium unleaded fuel for those numbers that i just gave you you can put regular unleaded in it it is going to reduce the numbers by like i don't know 25 30 horsepower somewhere in that ballpark but now having gone over that before we do the acceleration test here in the cx30 i wanted to mention to you guys the drive mode there is one it is labeled sport it is a silver button located just to the left of the shifter when you press that it's going to say sport up on the digital portion of the gauges and essentially it's going to adjust the shift points and the throttle response so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the cx30 here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right in three two one go quick that's not bad actually that initial punch was really really nice because i feel like everybody is turbocharging their vehicles these days even the cx30 is turbocharged and i'm sure that is plenty quick on paper but you know what i really love that initial punch because with turbocharged engines you don't always get that there's a lot of times a little bit of turbo lag i'm not sure if the cx30 has that or not on the uh, turbocharged trim levels because i'm not driving that one but i would imagine it might have a little bit of it but i love the initial punch of the naturally aspirated four cylinder here in the cx30 i will say that plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto the highway i'll just put it that way but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.9 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes that comes in at right at around 119 feet which is borderline sports sedan that's a brilliant number right there as far as braking feel goes it's perfectly fine it's not a firm braking feel but it's not a soft braking feel either really so it's pretty much as you would expect the braking to feel like in the cx30 i'll just put it that way but now let's go ahead and touch on suspension and handling because this is really where it gets good with the mazda cx30 so up front you're going to find an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle a front stabilizer bar as well as far as ride quality goes as we are cruising over the worst roads possible in hanover right now um it's actually not bad i've definitely felt worse at this particular road i've driven this plenty of times on a couple different test drives and i know for example that like the civic just got obliterated by this road but honestly the ride quality is not bad for the cx30 especially going over that horrible part of the road there so i actually don't have any issues there but 
this steering feel. This steering feel, you guys, is the best. That's the first thing I muttered to myself when I first started driving this one. That is what Mazda is known for, is the handling and the steering feel. And that's definitely the case, even in the CX-30. This doesn't have to be a Miata for it to be fun. It's still fun to drive because of the steering feel. It's such a heavy weight to it. Instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go. So I'm a big fan of it for that reason. It just feels natural. I love the steering feel in this thing. But as far as cabin noise goes, as uh, it's downpouring out right now, there isn't a whole lot of really uh, road noise or wind noise coming into the cabin. And I'll actually let you guys be the judge of that. We're going 38 miles per hour right now. There's gonna be a little bit of rain noise as we are cruising through some puddles obviously right now. but. It's really not that bad. I personally wouldn't have any issues with it. Then touching our rear visibility, I actually can see perfectly fine on my rear view mirror, so you're not gonna have any issues there. But touching on forward visibility, you actually do get rain sensing windshield wipers, a beautiful thing to bring up on a day like today for the select sport trim level and up. So whenever the CX-30 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there, kind of like automatic headlights, so. Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mazda CX-30. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mazda CX-30 finished in platinum quartz metallic. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. But speaking of colors, there are a couple new colors for the 2024 CX-30. So let me cover those real quick. You got Zircon Sand is going to come with the carbon turbo trim only. And then there is a ceramic metallic, which is going to come with the select sport trim level only. So if you wanted one of those two newest colors, those are the trims that you're going to have to go with. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number three, indicating that the CX-30 is built and assembled in Mexico, as a lot of vehicles have been lately that I've been seeing. But starting up front, taking a look at that front grille, you're going to find a matte black finish for the base and select sport trim levels, but then a gloss black finish essentially for all the other trim levels, like the one you were looking at right now. I do like the chrome perimeter that uh, surrounding that front grille and the headlights on the bottom there as well. It looks pretty good. Speaking of the headlights, LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. They will come with LED daytime running lights. You get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams for all trim levels again gotta love that so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so i love that feature personally and for the premium trim levels you're going to find an adaptive front lighting system that one is huge so when you're going around a bend at night the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a anything really so it's definitely a safety feature in itself but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the cx30 let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails will come standard on the select sport trim level and up you guys see those up top there chrome belt line molding also coming standard rear privacy glass also coming standard taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated for the select sport trim level and up with integrated turn signals again for the select sport trim level and up and you're also going to find an auto dimming driver side mirror believe it or not for the premium plus trim level so if somebody's got their high beams on behind you that's going to take care of that then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch aluminum alloys coming with the base however all other trim levels are going to get 18 inch aluminum alloy so that is what you guys are looking at right now i do like the design they look pretty darn good but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you will not find a body colored shark fin antenna i love the clean look that's something that mercedes and bmw have been doing lately too but very rarely do you see it but mazda is also doing it so good job mazda i think it looks good up there but rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard just below that you got that rear window wiper led tail lights do come standard as well for added illumination at night you gotta love that but one of my favorite parts about mazda that they always tend to do because so many manufacturers are tucking away the exhaust these days but mazda doesn't do that and i love that so dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip
All right, Simon now since we are around to the back of the CX-30, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a power lift gate for the premium trim levels. Otherwise, it is a manual lift gate like we have today. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 20.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 45.2 cubic feet. There is some LED cargo lighting back there. A lot of manufacturers will leave the halogen bulbs in the cargo area, but Mazda did not, so I do love that then there are some tie down anchors as well and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat which you guys know i love but then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 36.3 inches for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear center armrest with cup holders coming standard on the select sport trim level and up rear ventilation also coming standard on the select sport trim level and up but where are the rear charging ports, Mazda? <laughs> My kids would have stayed charged up, so that is one thing I would have added, but I do love that there's rear ventilation, though. I will say that, but then make your way up to the front seats. Cloth seating coming with the base trim level. Leatherette seats for the Select Sport Preferred and Carbon Turbo. Leather seating then for the Carbon Edition and Premium trim levels. Heated front seats for the Preferred trim level and up. I've had those on all day today because it's 40 degrees out. It's kind of cold. And eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the Preferred trim level and up as well, so I was definitely a big fan of that so overall seating was plenty comfortable absolutely no issues whatsoever in terms of seat comfort so at least in my short test drive here today i didn't have any issues but then take a good look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped for the select sport trim level and up and 10 and 2 grips are perfectly fine as well then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your mazda logo on the one side all of your buttons though are on the side of the key so you got lock unlock and that panic button of course it is all keyless entry with the push button start though so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot in the brake and press that black engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up there is going to be a seven inch lcd gauge cluster front and center tachometers all the way to your left you got your fuel information and engine temp all the way to your right and you can of course adjust what is on that digital screen by using the steering wheel mounted controls um, you can actually display between things like a digital speedometer and safety information or your old school regular speedometer that a lot of people still prefer and you can just press the info button on the steering wheel to display that in case you were curious of course it has things like how many miles you have left until you hit m there's your uh, outside temperature, like I said before, trip A, trip B. So pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Power moonroof is going to come on the preferred trim level and up. I loved that. Overhead sunglass holder for the select sport trim level and up. Wireless phone charger for the carbon edition trim level and up. Dual zoom climate control for the select sport trim level and up. Frameless rear view mirror for the premium trim level and up. And you will get home light controls up to three different garage doors if you were to go with the premium premium plus in case you wanted that but just elaborating a little bit on the interior quality just in front of the shifter you got a little bit of rubberized storage more than likely to put yourself in there just uh behind that you have your dual cup holders i love how everything surrounding the shifter is kind of finished in a gloss black so many other manufacturers a lot of the competition will leave that a matte gray or a matte black plastic very cheap looking but this is actually very high end looking this gloss black finish so i'm a big fan of that electromechanical parking brake and within the center armrest here you have an okay amount of storage not a ton but it'll get the job done also a couple usb charging ports are in there as well so overall though interior quality is actually very very nice just a lot of soft touch finishes just above the uh, climate control settings here for example just above the air vents on the passenger side here a lot of soft touch finishes on the doors as well like i said the gloss black finish around the shifter this is something that mazda always does a very very good job at and that's their interior quality for its class it does an amazing job if you compare it to some of the competition i'll just put it that way so well done mazda but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen there's going to be two different screen sizes you got an 8.8 .8 inch infotainment screen that comes standard but if you were to go with one of those turbo trims for the cx30 you're going to find a 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen it's a little bit bigger there bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay you're going to get wireless android auto apple carplay for the carbon edition trim level and up and another thing I should mention it is not touch screen it'd be a bit of a reach if it was but to control what is on that screen you got a circular dial and buttons located just behind the shifter and it's something that you do get used to I played around with this quite enough at this point with uh, reviewing Mazda's in the past it's not as difficult as it might initially seem so you would get used to it I can definitely confidently tell you that so no issues for me at least but you can also check out your radio information up there as well so when it comes to the sound systems there are three of them believe it or not 
Six speakers is gonna come standard, eight speakers for the carbon trims, and then 12 speaker Bose sound system for the premium trim. So having said that, we do have this six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. You're the living, breathing God of the bass was pretty intense actually. For six speakers, that was pretty darn good. That was just FM radio as well. I can imagine if you were to hook up your phone to this thing or a Sirius XM or something, like then the clarity would be absolutely amazing. Clarity was okay, but I think that's mainly due because we had FM radio here. I think it's a lot better if you had a different uh, source for the radio here. But other than that, that's a pretty good sound system, believe it or not, for just six speakers. I'll just put it that way. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the CX-30 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the CX-30 is an IIHS top safety pick, so that's a very good start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors of tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Lane departure warning, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, driver attention alert, and a blind spot monitoring system actually with rear cross traffic alert. That usually doesn't come standard, so that's pretty cool, but Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I'm gonna give you guys my two big pluses and two negatives for this one. So steering feel and the handling is great on the CX-30. And that is something that Mazda has always been known for. And it's definitely the case. It's the very first thing I noticed when I first started driving this one. So if you wanted something a little more playful, a little more enjoyable to drive, CX-30 is one you're definitely gonna have to look at. My other plus is the interior quality. It's definitely better than average when you compare it to the competition. And a lot of the competition will give you a lot of matte black plastics found surrounding the shifter and also on the doors. But in the CX-30, there's a lot of soft touch finishes and gloss black finishes, which is definitely more on the luxury end of things. So I was a big fan of that as well. As far as room for improvement goes, there's not a ton of space, especially when you compare it to the competition in the CX-30. But that's something Mazda is typically known for as well. So you don't buy a Mazda because you want more space. You buy it because you want the utility of an SUV. SUV. Maybe you're looking for all-wheel drive as well, but you also want it to be fun to drive, which a lot of the competition will not check that box. So I don't know. The space isn't all there, but the other thing I want to point out is I really do wish there was rear charging ports found in the rear seats because I know my kids are always on their tablets and whatnot. So that would have been pretty cool to find as well. But anyway, that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay going.